Is human hibernation possible? Can extreme cold ward off death? In the dead of winter, a 13-month-old toddler wanders lost and alone in the eye of a winter storm. She quickly succumbs to the cold as her body begins to literally freeze. Clinically dead for two hours, she amazingly comes back to life. How? Edmonton, Alberta. Layla Nordby and her two daughters, Erica and Elise, were having a sleepover at a friend's house. But when the kids went to sleep, the fun night turned into a waking nightmare. Erica was next to the wall, and sometime through the night she shimmied down the wall and basically got out of bed and went exploring. Layla woke at 2 a.m. When she saw her little girl had vanished, she panicked. I went all around the room. I went downstairs. I went into the playroom. I went everywhere, and Erica was gone. Then I saw the back door flapping, and that's when I realized something's wrong. 13-month-old Erica had managed to get into the backyard wearing only a T-shirt and a diaper. The temperature was minus 11 degrees Fahrenheit. When I went outside and I looked over to the left, you could see these little footprints and you could see a trail. So I followed that little trail and at the end there I found Erica. Succumbing to hypothermia, Erica's heart had stopped beating. She'd been clinically dead for over two hours with no visible signs of breathing or blood circulation. In this state, permanent brain damage can occur within a matter of minutes. So I had no idea what I was in for. When paramedics arrived, they found a distraught mother with her child, with parts of her body almost frozen solid. And the paramedics took her from my arms and they made a big clunking sound when they put her on the table. <laughs> I really thought my daughter was not going to make it. But remarkably, they detected faint signs of life. All I can remember is one paramedic saying, we got a pulse, let's move her. Arriving at the hospital, Erica's internal body temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit, nearly 40 degrees lower than normal. The chance of either her pulling through alive or the chance of pulling through without significant brain injury was getting smaller and smaller. Dr. Alan DeCan battled to get Erica's core temperature back to 98.6 Fahrenheit. You throw everything at that child, um, use all of your expertise, all the equipment, all the personnel that you have. It's, a, it's long odds, but you do what you can. Incredibly, Dr. DeCan and his team were able to get the toddler's heart beating and her lungs working again. Despite suffering severe frostbite on her fingers and toes, okay. Erica was saved, brought back from the dead. But this is not the first time a human has recovered from extreme cold core temperatures. In October 2006, a Japanese rock climber got lost for 23 days on Mount Roko, Japan. When found by his rescuers, his organs had failed and his core temperature was 71 degrees Fahrenheit. But he made a full recovery. How could this be possible? Like the doctors tell me that it was like an animal going into hibernation. Did Erica's body somehow do the impossible and go into some form of life-saving hibernation? Dr. Giesbrecht has spent over 20 years studying the effect of cold on the human body. Hibernation is an intentional decreasing of temperature and metabolic rate and oxygen consumption. Everything still works, just at a slower rate at a lower temperature. Animals hibernate to survive the long, cold winter months when food is scarce. Can humans pull the same biological trick in extreme circumstances? Bears, for instance, are made to, in the winter, go to sleep, slow down their metabolism, and lower their core temperature to a very, very low degree. But their heart is still working and they're still breathing throughout the whole winter period. But unlike a hibernating bear, Erica was found in a state of near cardiac arrest. We are made to live our whole lives at a core temperature around 98.6 or 37 degrees Celsius. 
when a human becomes severely hypothermic and they become clinically dead, uh, their heart's not working, they're not breathing, that is not hibernation. That's clinical death. Did Erica's hypothermic state save her? Hypothermia occurs when the body's core temperature drops below normal. A drop of a mere three degrees causes shivering and lethargy. Blood flow becomes restricted to the hands and feet. A drop of five degrees can lead to a loss of coordination, slurred speech, and violent shivering. Below this point, people become irrational, and their pulse rate decreases. By the time the body drops to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, severe hypothermia has set in. A person looks dead, and cellular processes cease. Before long, major organs begin to fail, causing clinical death. But how did Erica survive with a core temperature of 60 degrees? Doctors believe the answer could be connected to the way she froze and a mysterious biological response they simply cannot explain. A toddler freezes in sub-zero temperatures. Clinically dead for two hours, the child amazingly makes a full recovery. But how? Incredibly, the fact Erica was so young may have saved her life. If your heart's gonna stop, you want your heart to be stopping when the organs are still full of enough oxygen and energy so that they're gonna be able to work for a long time at a low metabolic rate while you're trying to restart the heart. Because all tissue requires less oxygen when it's cold, when you become clinically dead because of severe hypothermia, your tissue is actually preserved for a while. Small children and babies, uh, because of their body surface area, because of how large their skin is relative to their overall weight and overall size, they are exquisitely sensitive to uh, losing heat and developing a very low body temperature very quickly. Did Erica's tiny size help save her life? If you cool down fast enough, what happens is, is that your organs, the function of them, it slows down. The metabolic activity, how much oxygen, how much energy they end up needing to survive, goes down to a, just a trickle. In normal conditions, the brain can be deprived of oxygenated blood for around five minutes before suffering irreversible damage. After around 10 minutes without oxygen, death is almost certain. Because extreme cold reduces the body's metabolic activity, the brain can survive unharmed for hours on the reserves of oxygen and energy present when the body is rapidly cooled. This condition is called the metabolic ice box and occurs when the core temperature drops below 86 degrees. We often have the question, how cold is too cold? And it's people like Erica who make the answer to that question very difficult. We don't know the lowest limit. Erica's core temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit, or 16 degrees Celsius. There used to be you know, limits of temperature at 20 degrees, body temperatures of 19 degrees, body temperatures of 18 degrees. It, it does keep on getting lower. Until recently, doctors didn't attempt to resuscitate people with core temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Luckily for Erica, Today, doctors work on a different principle. You're never cold and dead until you're warm and dead. We end up trying to rewarm people if we think by the circumstances of where they had their cardiac arrest, we think that there is a significant chance that we're going to be able to resuscitate them. Usually, doctors have to warm up hypothermia victims by filling their lungs with warmed air, injecting warm fluids, or by warming the blood through an external heater. Her temperature when she arrived was about 16 degrees. Her heart started working again at about 17 degrees. But Erica had one last surprise in store. The wonderful thing about what happened with Erica is once her heart rhythm fixed itself and her heart started pumping, uh, basically she regulated her rewarming by herself. For some reason, Erica, with that body temperature, um, gods were on her side. Erica survived her ordeal without suffering any form of brain damage. She spent six weeks in the hospital, but made a full recovery. My health is pretty good. 
When I grow up, I'm, at night, I'm going to be a wrestler, and during the day, I'm going to be a teacher. Well, I think I'm a lucky kid. For Erica's family and the doctors who brought her back to life, Erica's survival isn't just lucky, it's miraculous. Whatever the truth, Erica now has a second chance to enjoy a long life. Weird or what?